So here we go, buddy. Welcome to another video. And today we're going to get some insight on Masao Luongo, of course, who's joined town on a free transfer until the end of the season. I'm joined by good old Dom Housen, the man who covers all things Sheffield Wednesday. Um, Dom, you've seen Massimo play the last three years at Hillsborough. Um, how are you doing, my friend? And uh, some insight on Massimo. I'm really good and happy new year to everyone. Uh, to my initial reaction as soon as I found out that Ipswich were signing Massimo Luongo is that that is a great piece of business and he is a really good League One player to be honest with you I think he um, could play in the championship maybe in the sort of the bottom end of the championship I think he's that good but yeah he, he, he's going to bring a lot I think to Ipswich depending on his fitness I mean he hasn't played a lot of football in the last six to nine months really and you know, Wednesday, he had a great back end to last season. He formed a really strong midfield three with George Byers and Barry Bannon that I think was as good as anything in the league and, and was a huge reason why Wednesday finished fourth in League One. Uh, Luongo brought so much um, off the ball, particularly that's his sort of strong suit. He's a defensive midfielder, but... He plays with real aggression. He brings bite to midfield. And then in possession, he's underrated, I think, on the ball. He, he keeps things very simple. And that, that's what he do at Ipswich. He keeps things um, ticking over nicely. He won't try Hollywood 40-yard, 50-yard passes. He will you know, go 10, 15 yards. He'll always go for what's the best option uh, on the ball. With his quality, he should really score more goals. You know, when Wednesday brought him to the club in 2019, Wednesday thought that they were signing an attacking midfielder or a box-to-box -box midfielder. And really what they did was that they turned him into more of a, a sitting midfielder. He's got very good footballing intelligence. That's what he is. He, positionally, and his awareness on the pitch of where to be at breaking up play, He's great at doing that. He does the ugly side of the game very well. And so I don't know if that was desperately what Town needed in this window, but that's what they're going to get with Luongo. That um, if, if you're wanting somebody to anchor the midfield and give that bit of steel, then he's going to bring a, that to the table. Yeah, I think he's coming in as like a backup to Lee Evans because that is sort of Lee Evans' role. Lee Evans' role, while Sam Morsey can sort of go forward a bit more. Of course, Dominic Ball is out for the season, so uh, Dominic Ball was that replacement for Lee Evans. But now Massimo Luongo is that man. Um, you know, thirty games last season, Dom for Massimo. Um, as Wednesday got to the playoffs, as you said, played in both legs against Sunderland, um, but then rejected a new, a new deal in the summer. Uh, what's the low down on that? There were a few players that rejected a new deal last summer and there was a huge turnover at Wednesday. So there was Luongo and Nathaniel Mendes Lang and Joe Wildsmith were the three players that turned down new deals. And it wasn't a major surprise with Luongo. Yeah, I, I think with the way that Luongo performed last season when he was fit, and I should stress that that is the key with Massimo Luongo. It's actually getting him out there on a, on a consistent basis. When he signed for Wednesday, this was a, it was a guy that you looked at and he was robust enough. And in his career, he played 40 to 50 matches every season. But when Wednesday signed him, then he started to pick up quite a few injuries. Yeah, there was one serious injury that kept him out, I think, for the best part of four to six months. So over the course of his Wednesday career, he on average only played probably 20 to 25 matches a season. And I think Ipswich will be looking at that. And the fact that you say that he's maybe been brought in to provide backup to Lee Evans and Sam Morsey, that suits, I think, Ipswich in the regard of, I don't see Luongo being able to come in having not played a lot of football this season and then being able to do Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, which is what you have to do sometimes in League One when the games come thick and fast. I think with Luongo, it might be a case of that they have to ease him in. He had the spell at Middlesbrough in the first half of this season and they they snapped him up in September. And, it, and to me, the only shock was that it took that long for him to get 
a championship club. You know, I, I think in his eyes, he's always seen himself as a player that should be playing in the second tier and that he's not a League One footballer. Uh, but at Middlesbrough, it didn't work out. And, and you know, I don't think he, he played barely any games there, really. So um, it was difficult for him to get much of a, of a look in there. And, and so he's actually got a point to prove. That's what he's got at Ipswich. And, and he's got a great platform now over the next five months to try and earn a longer deal or certainly put himself back in the shop window. And and so I, I, that's why I just think it's a really great signing. And, I, I, and there's part of Wednesday that I'm sure that the Wednesday's hierarchy that will be a little bit envious that they've signed Luongo as Luongo is a player that I think they wouldn't mind having in their ranks right now. That's how highly he's rated at the club. When he's fit, he's a huge asset. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, bolster that you know midfield and gives up, give us that experience. He was, you know, he's played in front of a big crowd. He, he had a brief loan spell at town back in 2012, but no one remembers that. If you remember that, well done, everyone watching this video. But um, no, it's a long time ago. Um, but you know, as you said, a player who's got a bit of injuries, but then he's only signed a deal until the end of the season. And if he does do well, I'm sure maybe they'll extend it. Um, he knows McKenna during his time at Spurs. Michael Carrick, of course, is the borough manager, and McKenna's got a good relationship with Michael, so I'm sure. He, you know, he, he's been speaking about him. Why has he not been playing and stuff like that? But maybe he has just been had some niggles and he's just not been able to play. I think he's played maybe one or two reserve games for Borough. Um, but that's one my one concern. He hasn't played much football, but you know, he's been training with town, I think, since early early December. So um I'm sure McKenna's run the rule over it. But as a whole, Dom, this is a good signing, as you said, maybe Sheffield Wednesday fans are a bit envious of thinking how you know a promotion rival has just signed a very good midfielder for us from last season. It's a calculated punt that Luongo, OK, hasn't played any football in the last six months. But like you say, he's been training with Ipswich for a few weeks. So you'd like to think that he'd have kept himself in good shape. It's not as if he's not been around good football clubs. He's been at Middlesbrough and he was with them training for the last few months. Now he's been at Ipswich. And and this is it. It's sort of been Luongo's body has broken down on him unfortunately in matches uh, and at Wednesday you know it was a bit of an injury hit spell but yeah there's no doubt in the ability that he's got and you know I, I could see him doing really well at Tipswich and, and he'd be going there thinking not only have I got to sort of get my career back on track he'd be thinking I'm not coming to sit on the bench I'm coming to take the place in the team and, and get a midfield spot and try and become a regular and be a big part of Ipswich's promotion push. I've, you know, and, and he's certainly got the quality to do that. Yeah, definitely. Because he's only 30 years old, so he's still got many, many years left in the tank, I'm sure. And yeah, you know, he's got aims to get back to the championship and hopefully he can do that with town. Um, and Dom, let's talk then about the... The bigger picture, the promotion picture at the moment. Of course, Sheffield Wednesday is a rival with town. Um, what, what's your thoughts on it as a whole? You know, that currently Wednesday are second, Pitt and Towns and now the top two, which is now out of the out of the top two for the first time since early August. So yeah, overall thoughts. It's so exciting. And yeah. the fact is it's a three horse race. The table tells you that the way things are shaping up, I look at the teams below them. The only one who I think could challenge the top three now is Derby, but they'd have to put one heck of a run together. I don't see it. I think they've left themselves with too much to do. Uh, and the top three, it could come down to all the business that they do in January. And you're looking at Ipswich and you're looking at Plymouth and both have been really aggressive in the transfer market and they're trying to get their business done as early as possible. Uh, and get players in to improve the squad. Wednesday, similar to Plymouth, are about to lose a key player in Mark McGuinness, who's going to get recalled and go back to Cardiff. That's a huge loss for Wednesday. Now, I was talking to you off there before that now Wednesday are going to have to bring in at least one, if not two centre-halves. They've got defensive problems right now in Ben Hennigan's out for the rest of the season, Michael Ahequa. He's currently injured. So is Dominic I author. Uh, they're short at the back and they've been getting away, really, with playing a three-man defence where two of them are not recognised centre-backs in Liam Palmer 
and Reese James, but they've been great in that they've been able to overlap and they're really good ball playing defenders, but they're not centre halves. And Wednesday have got a really tricky run of three matches in February that I think may define the season, could define the promotion race, where they've got Plymouth, Barnsley, and Town. And, and those three matches are going to be pivotal, I think, for Wednesday. If they're going to finish in the top two and they've got their eyes on number one. Um, and I think it's going to go one way or the other. I think there's going to be so many more twists and turns. Yes, Wednesday have just gone above Ipswich for the first time in ages. And there's the two-point gap. They've got a healthy goal difference of Wednesday. But I really don't think there's a lot between the three teams. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're looking at it. Plymouth's home form has been incredible. Can they sustain that? And uh, you look at Ipswich and Wednesday and Plymouth, they just don't lose many matches. And I don't see many teams beating them between now and the end of the season. And I can see it but, yeah, but there being a case of one of these teams is going to miss out on the top two and they could have 90 points in any other season. They, they'd get promoted, but it might be this year that the standard is that high and those three teams are a cut above the rest. That I, I think you could, I could see it now that one of them could miss out with close to ninety points, and that's how high the bar has been set. So I, I can't wait. I just think it's all set up to be a really intriguing battle, and it's going to go back and forth, and it's so hard to predict. I think what's going to happen next, but yeah, yeah, I don't see Plymouth falling away like they did last season i feel as if plymouth they've already got what 56 points on the board which is you know astonishing uh, and their home form has been like i said before uh you know brilliant and so i, I don't see them tailing off an ipswich you know i feel as if you know they found a formula now where you know they look as if you know this could be the season that they get back in the championship but you know wednesday this is it, it i think is if they recruit well in the next few weeks and they get two or three more, more bodies in, I do look at Wednesday and think, on paper, they've got the strongest squad in the division. There wouldn't be a lot in it between Ipswich and Wednesday, but I just think attacking firepower, Windass, Smith, Lee Gregory, Callum Patterson, Mowick Wilkes, Alex Mighton, they're probably going to sign another forward to strengthen that department. I think it's the best in the league. I just think with their firepower, it's, it will be a travesty if Wednesday don't finish in the top two this season. They will have underachieved if they don't. With the budget that they have, with the players they've got, they have to be finishing the top two. And really, first place is there for them. But Plymouth and Ipswich, they're going to push them all the way. As you said, mate, at the start there, Exciting. It is exciting. Um, and, and those games against Wednesday and Plymouth, you know, we've got Plymouth next week. And of course, we head, um, uh, you've got Portland Road, so for Wednesday, kind of Portland Road on 11th of February. So, oh, it's going to be interesting, my friend. And uh, it's exciting. And yeah, it'd be interesting to see what business does happen for Plymouth Town and Sheffield Wednesday in this window. And it, as you said, it could define the season. Um, so that's fantastic. But, Dom, it's been a pleasure. Um, any other business on Massimo Luongo? Any, anything else we should look out for? Any, any, sort of thing it started to play that he does you know differently to any other player uh not really nothing that sort of um comes to mind it's yeah really a case of what i said before of you know what you're going to get with massimo the one though uh, and he's a consistent performer he rarely goes sort of below seven out of ten every week and and i i, I think as a squad player if that's what he's been brought in and that, you know to do that job of where he come in and you know, he'd be you know, part of that midfield uh, and you, you tell him to sort of be very disciplined and, and be in front of the defence and give them that extra layer of protection. He is absolutely perfect for that. And yeah, um, it will all be about fitness with Massimo Luongo. But yeah, no, he's a good character. You know, having interviewed him a number of times over the years as well, he's, he's a bubbly personality, got a big smile on his face all the time. Uh, and I can see him fitting in really well. And, and he's a good character, I think, to have around the place. He's, and he's got great attitude. And that's it. He is a, he's a workhorse in midfield. And that's what he's going to bring.
That's great to hear. Yeah, I did enjoy his interview with the club. I thought he came across really well and uh, he looks like a smiley character, which is good to hear. And of course, uh, Australian international back in the day, um, you know, was in the World Cup squad for for them as well. Um, but Dom, uh, bring on the 11th of February. It's going to be a homecoming for Massimo Luongo taking on um, Sheffield Wednesday, but also a massive game at Port Royal. I'm sure it's going to be a sold out crowd. Looking forward to it. But Dom, thanks again, my friend. Yes, thank you for having me. Tom, man. All right then, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope you've got some great insight there and uh, see you later. Bye-bye for now.